All right here. I think I'm just about done. Yeah, I'm gonna move this over here. And then move this here in between. Oh yeah, looks better. It looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm done. So I'm gonna go to this page. Okay, saw submission. Okay, almost done. Okay, great. View these. Okay, so these are watch those two videos and all right i'm gonna do that exit solidworks completely all right so make sure everything's saved and then gonna get out of solidworks so exit all right next make sure the filing five not four not six files in their own folder okay in their own folder okay i've got the assembly the rivet the blade the handle and the rivet drying Oh, wait a minute. I'm supposed to have my name in them? Oh, that's right. Got to have my name in them. Initials should be good enough. Right, right, right. Okay. And, and just do that to all of them, and I should be good to go. Open SolidWorks and each of the files. Okay, open SolidWorks, each of the files, not just the parts. Oh, okay. So all of the files. Make sure everything is placed. Okay, here comes SolidWorks. All these guys. All right, hit open. Wait, what? Unable to locate. No, we don't locate it. It's right there. What do you? Oh, okay. Wait, where'd it go? Okay, you can see it here. It's like, it's obviously right there. Um, What do you mean locate? It's right. It's right there. Ah! Oh, no. What happened? Oh, my goodness. Ah! No! Now, has this ever happened to you? Do you want it to happen to you? Do you want to avoid it happening to you? Yes, I'm pretty sure you want to avoid those kinds of things. I'm here to help you avoid these kinds of problems as well as do a great job on your project. What we have here is an issue with file management the way SolidWorks likes to do it. Let me explain a few things and we'll, then we'll go back to how to fix this stuff. So basic SOLIDWORKS file management, here we go. Hopefully this won't take too long. Bad things can happen, as I just showed you. Look at this. This is a saw without a handle. What happened to that handle? You can see that it shows that it's supposed to kind of be there, but there's a problem here and it's grayed out and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes the files don't open. You saw that happen there. There's always some kind of wasted time involved. Sometimes it makes your ice cream melt. No, it actually doesn't do that. But if you wait too long, your ice cream might melt. You know, who wants to have melted ice cream? And other bad things can can come forth from this. So let's see how to uh, how to deal with these situations. First, we need to understand how SolidWorks actually connects these files. All right. Let's say we've got three parts. We want a drawing of each part. Two parts make subassemblies. That subassembly has a drawing. There's a main assembly from the subassembly in part three. And then the main assembly also has a drawing. So how are these all related? Now that's the thing about SolidWorks. They're not separate. You don't just make a file and then you make another file and something. They're all connected. And that's the beauty. So if you make a change in one, it gets, it gets passed down to all the rest. It's great but it has to work. You have to let the process happen and not get in the way. You start off with the parts. Everything is based on them. That's why I put them at the top there. So then assemblies come from the parts and the subassemblies, and then the drawings are made from those same parts. Or for that matter, the drawings can be made of the assembly. So everything starts with the parts and, and trickles down from there. But what can happen here? So the assemblies look for parts and subassemblies. So we take part one and we make a drawing out of it. And it also goes into the subassembly over here. Part two goes in the subassembly. And also it's the, uh, part two drawing is dependent on part two. Part three, of course, has its own drawing as well. The subassembly gets put into the main assembly. And we also have to make a drawing of the subassembly. Part three also goes into the main assembly. And then once that's done, we can make a drawing of the main assembly. The drawings look for the parts. The assemblies 
when you open it up, it looks for this particular part and it does it by file name. So if it's named part two, it's looking for part two. If it's named part one, then that part one drawing is going to look for part one. So here is the big picture, the key thing. If you change the file name, it can break that connection. If you change this to part, you know, just part, then part one drawing is gonna be looking for part one. It's not gonna be looking for part. It's not gonna be knowing which one it is. You have to tell it and you've told it by opening it using that file name. Now, uh, if you are in a, a large corporation, even some, some smaller corporations, they'll, they'll have something that allows you to do those kinds of changes outside. But for now, it's still important to know how it works. If you change that part name, guess what? The subassembly won't work now. If this subassembly doesn't work, then this drawing won't work well. It won't show up very well. It won't show up with this part. Same thing with the main assembly and then the main assembly drawing. So changing one part name, if you do it wrong, can result in a, a domino effect, okay? What do we do about it? First off, we avoid the problem. We avoid the problem by having naming conventions. Any good company is gonna have a naming convention. So do you put a description of it first? Do you put a part number of it first? What do you do? A lot, of, a lot of them just put part numbers. You get assigned a part number. That's what it is. That's all there is to it. Some actually have part numbers and descriptions. Whatever it works, whatever works, fine. You know, might have a color, I don't know. But do that correctly from the start. Don't take the default name, which is part one or part two or whatever it is, and then go from there. You want to immediately save it as the right file name. In this class, we have our naming convention where you can name it whatever you want to as long as your name is in the name, okay? Something like that. If everybody called their saw, then I wouldn't know whose was which. That's why you gotta have your name in the file name. It's like putting your name at the top of a paper for an exam or something like that. Okay, so make sure you do that. So that's how we do it. That's why we have naming conventions. All right, so do it right from the start. That's the number one thing. Next thing is use a folder for each project. So put all of the files for the saw in one folder and all the files for the screwdriver in another folder. All right, that's gonna help you keep things organized. And then if you do, like, if you start one, one of them over or something like that, but you're not quite sure if you want to get rid of the old one, take it, fine, that's great, but put it into a separate folder because they'll be looking first within that same folder and you can get things screwed up. You can start looking at things, the wrong things for the right ones. It's, it can be a big mess. So only keep in your working folder the correct updated files. Don't change names in the any Windows dialog box, even if it's in SolidWorks and you open up something in SolidWorks to open within SolidWorks and you see it like, oh man, I got to change that file name. Don't do it. Don't do it. If, if you see something like this where, you know, you, you can just type in whatever it is, don't do that. All right. This will cause you all sorts of headaches and problems. Other ways of avoiding these problems, using the SOLIDWORKS save as command. So if you want to change the name of a part, go to file, save as, and then this is going to come up right here. All right. And it saves the document with a new file name. Notice this very important thing. Open files that have references to the original document will refer to the new file. So if you've got a part and it's drawing and you want to change the name of the part, Make sure that drawing's open. Do the save as thing, and then it'll be seamless, no problem. But if you have the part and the drawing isn't open, or an assembly isn't open, or something like that, it can get screwed up. All right, so make sure your entire project's open, then do the save as. And that can apply to drawings, parts, assemblies, all that stuff. Do this save as thing, okay? In general, save and backup often. That should go without saying. You can have a secondary backup to a thumb drive, but don't depend on thumb drives. They get lost, they get destroyed, they get uh, fried. If we should have a shared Google Drive folder. Uh, we're gonna work on that, but uh, only put final files in that Google Drive folder. If I say you want 10 files in there, then give me the 10 up-to-date files. Everything else should be stashed in another archive folder somewhere. And you gotta make sure that those 10 actually work. 
sometimes those file names get changed and that can be my fault, but I'm, I know when to look out for that. Not so much my fault as Google Drive, but um, I'll look out for that. Okay, what happens if you did something bad and something comes up and you know the, the issue happens? Got this in the wrong order, but choose browse for file here. Unable to locate it, browse for file. Then you find your renamed part and then you choose it. A dialog box here and you'll find your renamed part and you just click on it, double click on it. And hopefully the SolidWorks will say, oh, I get it. That's that same part now. Now I see, thanks for showing it to me. But it's pretty stupid in that it can't look for it itself. It doesn't know any better. Browse for file, find the file that you really wanted to use that you'd renamed, just like I show in here and go for it. Fixing the problem part two, okay? What if you've already opened up the file? I mean, you could go back and reopen it and get to that dialog box, but here's a, a faster way of getting to the dialog box. Right mouse click on that missing file, this one right up here. See how it's missing saw handle there? And then go set to resolve. If you do that, then you get back to that dialog box where you've got browse for file, shows up again. So this whole browse for file thing here is, and then you see down here, saw handle, my name, double click on it. And hopefully doesn't always work depending on, you know, especially if you've moved things around or changed things around, whatever bad things can happen there, but then hope that it works. All right. So that's fixing the problem. In conclusion, a couple big things, do it right the first time. And second thing, mistakes happen, but don't freak out like I did, uh, just fix it. So let's see what we can do about that other one that I started with here. So here we are, the, I renamed everything with JB here and this bad boy, you know, this is how the drawing is gonna show up. It can't find anything. So what do we do with this one? This is a little bit different than what I just showed you. What you need to do is you can right click right on that file and then go open part, all right? It says saw rivet. And then it's gonna get you to that dialog box, browse for file and JB saw rivet, open, hopefully it comes up. Okay, so it wants me to open that up. All right, let's go to saw rivet drawing here. Okay, what I really wanna do, I should have put the first place is click on replace model. All right, make sure you have all views selected if that's what you want, go to browse, and then saw rivet and hopefully magically it'll work. Hit green check mark. Okay, it didn't like that. Huh, well, it obviously had a problem with that. Like I said, you got to pray for it. All right, so here's a saw rivet. Well, let's go back to the assembly. Here we go, assembly. So right click here on saw handle and go to set to resolved and i'm going to browse for the file jb saw handle and it says oh i get it now right click saw blade set to resolved browse for file saw blade there it is it's not properly assembled so we should do that mate that with that oh that's a face i didn't want a face I wanted an axis. There we go. So now I want to get the saw rivet in there. Set to resolved. Browser file. And it should do the same thing for this one. But I have to. And for whatever reason, it calls it saw rivet. Oh, okay, it actually sees it as saw rivet anyway. I don't know why it's showing it like this here. But okay, so if I do a save there, then let us get out of all of them. Window, close all, save all. Okay, obviously there's a problem with this one. All right, see what I can do here. How much did I fix? And obviously this is why you wanna do it right the first time. Okay, well, the assembly came through and it's having a hard time with this. So I'm gonna hit browse for file and I'm gonna to go to saw rivet. So hopefully this will fix all the problems. 
Yep. So now the sovereign, see, sometimes that was maybe a better idea in the first place was just to get out and then come back in and get that set up there. Okay. Looks like I've got a little bit of work to do with this. Did that ever fix that? No, it did fix that. Okay, great. So now I can save that and be done. So I hope that this helps you figure out if you have a problem or better yet, just really shows you that you want to do it right the first time. Good luck. And I can't wait to see your improved projects.